So, um, Leon thanked everybody. I have to thank Eileen again because I just shudder to think what it would be like without her. Um, he didn't mention the moderators. They have a hard time wrangling their panels, so thanks to them. Thanks to the missing Charles Poynton, who tested the capabilities of our AV team, and they came through very nicely, and the ATSC. Uh, mark your calendars. The 20th is coming up next year here, same place. You may submit proposals anytime you want. I've got one already. Uh, the deadline will be in October. There's my email address. If you don't get a response, I probably haven't received it. Try again. Uh, the basics. Again, the schedule rules. It's Verizon wireless time. Uh, power is available in the rows. The Wi-Fi in the room. The SSID is HPA conference. The password is HPA 2013. Uh, demo room open till 7.30 today. Sorry? Oh, sorry, HPA hyphen 2013, and it's lowercase HPA. Uh, it's written correctly on the slide. Um, demo room open till 7.30 today and till 2 p.m. tomorrow. There are no demos. Thank you. Uh, after uh, 2 p.m. and no demos on Friday. Uh, it's in the Indian Wells Ballroom, which is just to our uh, right, uh, left when you go outside the room. Lunch, depending on the weather, will be on the terrace, so you'll figure out where it is. The breakfast round tables in the Desert Vista. Still have a couple of slots available for tomorrow, lots of slots available for Friday. If you want one, see me. Okay, um, quizzes. The theme of the quizzes this year, last year we had a theme of World's Fairs. The theme this year is taken from Jerry's super session, More Bigger But Better. Everyone is eligible except me. Any form of research is okay. Uh, but if you ask me questions, I won't answer. Um, answers can be found online to all of the questions, but you need to know where to look. Place your entries in the bowl by the end of a session, but quiz number five, place your entries by the end of the last refreshment break. Have your name and quiz number. There's no penalty for wrong answers. Enter as many times as you want. There are fabulous prizes. The quizzes are hard, so we'll dip into the door prizes if you want. Get a Blu-ray player or a Roku HD or something like that. Quiz number one, which is operating now, including long-term adaptation, what is the dynamic range of human vision? Any way you want to characterize that. And quiz number five, in the context of our business, what is... 26578125. Um, quiz zero was yesterday's quiz. It was an easy one. The answers were given in my presentation on the origin of 24 frames per second. What one parameter do all these represent? Western Electric, 90 feet, 46 pictures, 999000. And the answer is frame rate. Uh, the 90 feet per, sec uh, per minute is 24 frames per second. 46 pictures per second was Edison's idea. 0.999000 repeating is 1,000 divided by 1,001. The NTSC color change uh, tiebreaker. Why do the first two not have to do with uh, frequency response? Because Western Electric, which came up with the Vitaphone system, uh, and 90 feet per minute, which is the 24 frame per second, um, were used in a double system sound system, where the sound was coming off a phonograph record, so it didn't matter what the film rate was. Uh, part three, speakers. If you would like your presentations posted, you don't have to, give them to Eileen or Max at the desk, and uh, they will get it posted. No recording, please, except for personal use. Door prizes on Friday afternoon, but we're going to be in a big rush, so we'll figure out something. Uh, but lots of cool stuff for door prizes and quiz prizes. Uh, basics part four, be nice. As uh, Jerry said, the only thing he wants to hear you say outside of a question period is, hang on, I have to go out of the room to answer a call. Uh, again, the Wi-Fi information, please fill out your evaluations. And to get to the evaluations and the presentations, go to the main Tech Retreat website, so go to the HPA website, click on Tech Retreat, scroll down all the way past all the uh, sponsors and everything, and you will see a little horizontal line at the bottom right. That is the secret place to click. Click there, it will take you to the evaluation page, and the top of the evaluation page will take you to the presentations page. All of my presentations have been posted uh, there are at least two more that have been posted so far. 
technology year in review. Once again, this is the 27th or 78th, depending on how you count. This is the year of HDTV. Um, we have agreement between Lightman and Nielsen for the first time that three quarters of U.S. households have HDTV sets. Uh, but given that, that three quarters have HDTV sets, we're still using analog press bridges and we're still protecting for four to three. Why? Why are we protecting for four to three? So even a bunch of the people who don't have HDTV probably have 16 to nine standard definition sets. This is also the fourth or 85th annual, this is the year of 3D TV. Uh, but then we have this headline that appeared in The Verge, it's official, 3D is dead. Um, now that may be premature applause. 3D was dead in 1928 also. Uh, um, this I thought was interesting. It appeared in businessinsider.com. This is not 3D TV. This is 3D in movie theaters, re-releases with 3D. So I don't know if you can make out the names. The first set of columns is for Toy Story 2 in October 2009. The second is for The Lion King in September 2011. That did very well in a 3D re-release. But then after that, Beauty and the Beast in January of last year, Finding Nemo in September of last year, and Monsters, Inc. in December of last year. Uh, just doesn't seem to be the draw that it was for The Lion King. This has been, however, a very good year for traditional TV. Uh, record profits for CBS, record U.S. election spending, record audiences, depending on how you count, for the Super Bowl and the Olympics, uh, BBC, largest audience they've ever had. Um, some headlines, New York Times in January of this year, called TV, the thinking person's entertainment. That's something we haven't had before. <laughs> but broadcasting and cable back in April, um, quoting Whiting of Nielsen saying, uh, anytime, anywhere, video is still primarily traditional TV at home. Huffington Post in January of this year has television killed the mobile star. Wired in December of last year, no one uses the smart TV internet because it sucks. <laughs> this, you don't have to read off the slide, it's uh, from the Nielsen Media Universe. There's a URL to that on the next page, which you can get when you link to the presentations. Um, but I'll just close up on the uh, middle here, the sun. Everything is increasing in that sun. Oh, let me go back one slide for a moment. Uh, just look at the bottom there, uh, those three little things that are out in the orbit of Pluto. Uh, those are the three media that have gone down. They are non-smartphones, um, over-the-air broadcast TV, and VCRs. Everything else has gone up. So continuing to close in here in the sun, look at the tremendous portion that is traditional TV, and that's more than ever before, but also time-shifted TV is more than ever before, DVD and Blu-ray, game consoles, internet, everything is more than ever before. Um, but just one caution, this is Nielsen doing the report, and so that's why we see social media users in the upper right are aliens. Um, down at the bottom right, I have Nielsen's view of how many TVs we have, and that's not specifying HD or not, but Lightman says that three-fifths of all TVs in the U.S. are HD TVs. So once again, I ask, why are we protecting for four to three? Uh, but it's not entirely sunny. Here's something that appeared yesterday in the New Yorker's blog by Ken Oletto's uh, brilliant media critic. Uh, some believe the foremost threat to traditional television comes from Dish Network's Hopper. Some believe Netflix and Amazon. My candidate is Aereo. Uh, at the right, I have Aereo. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, that little uh, funny-looking Tory gate, if you will, sitting next to the dime, is an antenna element. And the way that Aereo 
gets around the fact that they're actually doing cable TV picking up of signals is they have one of those little elements, at least one, for every subscriber that they have, even though they all combine to uh, pull in the signal. As far as uh, Dish Network's Hopper, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it is a device for eliminating commercials. So naturally, people who depend on commercials are not so happy about that, and so the controversy that TechCrunch is referring to here is CNET wanted to give an award at CES to the Hopper because, hey, those of us who watch commercials would love to get rid of them, and CBS, which now owns CNET, said, no, no, no. We don't want you to give an award. Uh, and then we have the cloud. We're going to have a lot of talking about the cloud in um, presentations coming up. And um, here's a story in the New York Times saying that on Christmas Eve, White Christmas was a blackout on Netflix because Amazon went down. So all of Amazon's cloud services, which included Netflix, went down. It was an even better year for radio. Here's a story in Mashable, the enduring power of radio in the digital age. Uh, in the world, 95% of people can get radio versus about a third getting the internet, any form of internet. In the developing world, it's 75% versus 20%. Radio is the only news medium to have been increasing in Russia since 2008. Um, in use by U.S. adults for getting music, it's eight times as much as they use satellite radio, 17 times as much as they do streaming or downloading. In terms of service reliability, in the Philippines, 85% of the population can get radio versus only 60% for TV. And then, when something like uh, Superstorm Sandy hits, we have Politico down here, uh, local officials, wireless carriers, MIA during Sandy. So wireless carriers went down, your smartphone didn't work, uh, your TV worked fine if you had power, but a lot of people didn't have power, not too many have crank-up TVs. But there is a crank-up radio that you can buy at Radio Shack inexpensively. People started using pay phones again. There was a story in the New York Times about a French tourist who used a pay phone to call home. They reported what the news was so he could tell the people in the neighborhood when they'd be getting power back. And newspapers did pretty well. Those media did well, the newer media did not. There's even older technology in today's news. Take a look at the animation coming up here. See that? That's 32,000 year old animation. <laughs> now, yes, it's a more modern person who did the animation by going to the uh, Chauvet caves and copying down what the images are and then animating them. But the reason he did that was he went into the cave with a torch to see what it was like and he noticed that the stuff looked animated because of the crags and the rock and the way that they allowed the light from the torch to go through. So if he went through the cave with the torch, he would see animated images. So he went to a whole bunch of the Paleolithic sites and uh, animated them. I recommend looking up uh, Mark Azema animation .mov and you'll see about two minutes of his animation. Some of them are absolutely amazing. Some uh, technology news besides lawsuits. Uh, Nowish, we're having phosphor lighting. That's a blue LED um, that's emitting light through a phosphor. That's something PRG is selling. And then the little hand holding uh, a Lumix plasma bulb. There are no electrodes in it. Um, that's because people are starting to find some problems with LED lighting for cameras. Uh, we have high-speed cameras, 4K at 900 frames per second. Brilliant use of that, by the way, by CBS in the Super Bowl. Absolutely terrific. It was their hyper-zoom system. Because it was 4K, they could zoom in. Because it was high-speed, they could slow stuff down. Absolutely terrific. Uh, Future-ish, at the bottom right, those are two views of a display that was actually shown at IBC this year in September. Uh, that's a view from the left on top and a view from the right on the bottom. There are five playing cards sticking straight out, and you can see in one of the views the fronts of the playing cards and in the other the backs of the playing cards. Um, and yes, it was continuous as you walked across the display. Not so good when they showed moving pictures, but really good for that still. 
Uh, metamaterials for computational imaging. You may have seen something about this. At the moment, they're talking about using this for the airport scanners. So instead of having to stand there like this while the thing goes whoosh around you, um, it will pick everything up without it having to go whoosh. But the same kind of thing will allow a camera without lenses to work. And a story about artificial DNA for data storage the possibility of encoding stuff in DNA, and then, you know, what happens if you need to replicate your library? No problem. The DNA just reproduces itself. Here's the annual CEA survey. It's online. You can get the whole thing in a larger format. No big surprises, but take it with a grain of salt. In July of 2009 and January of 2010, they say that both TV and color TV was 99%. In July of 2012 and January 13, TV was 99 percent, color was 97 percent, which means that 2 percent of the population went out and bought black and white TV sets. <laughs> Here's a CES item that Pete won't mention, the iPotty. <laughs> it's to train your kids to be prepared for hemorrhoids. Um, more bigger but better. Visual acuity is measured in retinal angle, and retinal angle is based on screen size and viewing distance. Viewing distances maybe go up in powers of three, so handheld device maybe a foot in front of your eyes, computer maybe three feet, uh, TV, the old Lechner distance, nine feet, new cinemas, stadium type seating, or the premium stuff we heard about yesterday, maybe 27 feet, old cinemas, maybe 80 one feet, and stadiums, people are going to stadiums now to watch operas and ballets and things, maybe 243 feet. Well, we know that there's great variation in the distance in the stadium and in the cinemas. You could sit in the front row or you could sit in the back row. We know that handheld, some people are doing this and some people are doing this. Uh, computers, we know there's variation, but we seem to believe that there is only one viewing distance for TV. And in fact, Bernie Lechner did do a survey and he found that the distance that people sat from their TVs was nine feet with very, very little deviation. But the fact that the distance from where your keister is to where the screen is, is nine feet, doesn't mean that's what your eyes are doing. So I'm indebted to our next speaker, Sarah Pearson, for pointing this out to me. Here is one viewer in one seat with the keister in the same place the green horizontal bar is a yardstick. There's about a three-foot difference in viewing distance for that one viewer just in those two different modes. 